Welcome to the SoCal Summer Swing Out Podcast. I am joined by the wonderful, the lovely, the entertaining, and talented <laughs> Joanna Melly. Hi, friend. Hi, friend. By far the best introduction I have ever received. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm very glad that you're here. For those of you who don't know Joanna, you've probably seen her in some uh, YouTube videos, some competitions here or there slaying it left and right um but before we go into that you want to feel free to give us an introduction of who you are an introduction of who i am okay um my full name <laughs> is ioana surmelitrisopoulou I, I was born and raised in athens mm. um which is i always call home and it always feels like home people ask me sometimes and um LA feels like home but Athens mm -hmm. is all you know home um I grew up there I have a younger brother I studied abroad um I spent a few years in London I did my undergrad there in uh, theater arts mm -hmm. then I shot a film and then I came to LA because I wanted to do a master's degree in acting for film specifically mm -hmm. and that's kind of what brought me to LA, uh, which mm -hmm. originally was supposed to be for a year or two, but it's been a uh, 13 years counting. <laughs> <laughs> um, what else do I tell you about myself? I love to travel. Mm -hmm. I love to dance, which we're going to get into. I know mm -hmm. I love to bake. I have a huge sweet tooth. Mm -hmm. Um, and as much as I love acting for uh, my career and work, so to speak, I yeah. find it difficult to do it with like a murder mystery party. This is just a fun fact I was talking about. A murder mystery party is actually challenging for me because it's all with people that know me so well. Oh. <laughs> so there's oh. a story. Okay. Oh, the, the one that's coming up. That's right. We can't talk about it. Love them. I, we can't talk about it. Don't ask what the character is. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I have an idea who it is, but I can't, I can't say it. Okay. Um, quick shout out to Bianca. Happy birthday. Happy birthday, which is tomorrow, her actual it's birthday. Tomorrow. Your birthday is actually tomorrow, but happy birthday to you. So I want to talk a little bit about what you had mentioned about Greece being home, because you and I have this similarity. We're not, neither of us is like American, right? Yeah. So like, how did, how was your, what was your experience like going from Greece to London to then here and being here for 13 years? Ooh, so um, first off, I want, I knew that I wanted to study abroad while I was still in high school. I had done some exchange programs and things like that. So I'd been abroad and I really liked the idea. Mm -hmm. So I decided to actually, as much as, I mean, I loved Greece, but I wanted to go out and experience new cultures and be, you know, surrounded by new people and ideas and everything. So going to London was easy-ish, mm -hmm. um, really close to home. So I was back there for like, you know, all the holidays. Yeah. London was really fun. It's a, it's an exciting city. There's, there's so many things to do. And of course it's very, uh, it's like an artistic hub as well. Theater is mm -hmm. Um, so I enjoyed it. I would not live in London. And that is the reason why I left. It's, um, and, and the reason also why I've stayed in LA. So I graduated that program and then I found my master's here and I came here and moving to LA was a little harder because it was so far mm -hmm. and there's a time difference, which mm -hmm. just makes things feel more challenging yeah. Um, so I moved here in 2010 and um, I did not, there were no, well, maybe there were, there were iPhones back there. They had just come out in Greece. I didn't yeah. want one because I didn't need one, but I got here and I remember I just felt disconnected from being back home. Now we have like all these apps. It's so easy. Like we're just talking right now. It could be in Greece and we're just like chat. Yeah. Um, I had to get my phone and buy these prepaid cards, receipt cards, mm -hmm. call the number, and then call my home number. Mm -hmm. And it just, 
you know, as silly as it might sound, it was a process that made me feel, you know, a little more disconnected from back home. But that was the very initial experience. And it didn't really, I mean, it was hard, but it was, it was fine. I, I got over it um, mm -hmm. quick, but being in school was great here. I was in a program that I really liked. I made mm -hmm. some friends. Some of my oldest friends are from that program. Um, and it took a while. I feel like generally LA is a city that you need time to get to know and to love or just to like start enjoying. It's so big. It's so spread out mm -hmm. um, that you just don't have a sense of it you right. know so when I first moved I also didn't have a car obviously it was all very new so it took me like two or three years to say that I'm actually enjoying like I can see myself being here longer mm. um that being said it's not I mean the weather is perfect it's very similar to back home which I think for me it, it made me feel um you know, it's, it's like familiar. Yeah. It may be comfortable. It's not just like, Oh, it's sunny. It's what I know. Um, the trees look similar. The mountains look similar. I look around and it's not foreign. So mm -hmm. that really feel like, you know, I also belong here. Um, but actually I wasn't till I started swing dancing that I felt like okay, now I have roots in LA. Now, like if I were to leave, I would actually miss this place, um, which is so interesting. <laughs> mm. Wait, did you, because I did the podcast with Demetrio. Yeah. Um, if you all haven't heard that, by the time you hear this, that one will already be out, which it was really good. We did mention you. Um, well, but uh, did you also learn how to dance in Athens or did you learn here? No, I learned in LA. Whoa. Um, yes, I did. But um, so what happened was my friend Lindy was fairly popular or it got popular two or three years before I started dancing here. Mm -hmm. And so uh, my good friend back home, she started dancing first. And so mm -hmm. every time I went back to visit, you know, would go out social dancing, like she'd take me to these bars and there was dancing, live music. And I would just like hang out. I never danced, but it was fun. And I remember this one year, there was a street festival uh, in downtown Athens. So they close up the streets and it's just for pedestrians and, you know. And so I joined them and it was her and her, like her dance crew or friends. They brought um, like a boom box or something and they played music and it was on the street and they were just dancing with each other, mm -hmm. roasting and stealing and what. And I was like, this is so much fun. I can't believe, like, I don't understand what's happening, but I love watching it. Yeah. And uh, that's what got me into thinking that if it's, I was thinking if it's happening in Athens, then it probably is happening in LA. So mm. then I went back and I looked up uh, Lindy lessons, classes and schools and whatnot, um, and slowly got into it. Now, um, when you... When you moved, so in my experience, when I moved here to the States, I only had my sister and a couple family friends, right? Mm -hmm. Was the transition, was the culture shock like less since you had been to London or were there still a lot of things that you were like, oh, wow, that's very different? Um, so I don't actually have any family out here. I don't really mm. know. Um, but I'm trying to remember. I can't, I don't think that it was a culture shock for me. I, you know, considering I had spent three years already living away from home in a different environment. And to be honest, um, culture here and people here operate much closer to the way I operate. Mm -hmm. it's of, you know, like our social activities and relationships with friends and, and um, it's different than it is in England. Yeah my experience so no I don't think I didn't feel a car cultural shock um of course I always felt like and to this day I'll feel homesick um mm -hmm. you know during the year but it's for me it's little things that are I actually here's a funny thing that happened um 
I was hosting some uh, my really good friends from LA in Athens this past mm -hmm. summer. Yeah. And so I was touring them. We're, we're, I made like this uh, little itinerary uh -huh. uh, and where to go in Athens. And so we went out, we had two days to tour. So we went out and I was like, okay, let's go. We're walking, blah, blah. And, you know, five minutes into it, this was like morning. And um, one of my friends is like, okay, so when should we plan to have lunch? When is going to be lunch break? And I was like, wait, what? <laughs> He was joking, but it's small things like that that hit me. Even here, mm. there's a lot of planning about around meal times, and they're very specific. And that's not how it is back home, especially in the summer, and especially when you're out. It's like mm. we'll just we'll stroll, we'll get a coffee, you know, get like a pastry to go. When we're hungry, we'll sit down and have a meal, and so little things like that do make me feel like ah. Those are cultural differences and mm. fun to recognize. <laughs> Did you find like a cultural difference in the swing dancing when you first started swing dancing as well? Um, not really, because I never actually to this day, I've danced very, very little in Greece. Is that what mm. you mean? Dancing? Oh, I just mean like, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Between Greece, the swing dancing in Greece and in, because you said that you first encountered dancing in Greece on the street. Right. But yes. Then found it in LA, right? And you yeah. said they were switching a bunch in like Greece. And then I was curious if you found like a difference between the two. Um, no, it didn't it didn't really feel different. And again, my experience was, you know, brief, but um the energy and the you know that people brought and this idea of we're all hanging out, we're all asking each other to dance, um, the openness and this this ease of of talking and, and dancing mm -hmm. I felt like it was that translate or not translated that carried through mm -hmm. the two yeah yeah and so speaking of social dancing you mentioned how you started but I don't think I heard where did you start which uh did you go to like Passion Ballroom or I went to the Linny Loft ah so Dax and Sarah Dax and Sarah yeah and uh, I think it was a year after they opened. I think I started late 2015. Snap. Um, mm -hmm. And I did, oh, gosh, it's so funny. I'm just remembering, I couldn't find something. And then my friend from Greece, I couldn't find, um, I didn't know how to navigate anyway, the schools. Mm -hmm. And so my friend from Greece, I asked her, you know, I said, I'm looking for to take lessons and stuff. And she's like, you should ask Stephen Chansey. I was like, who? Mm -hmm. even chance is like because they used to go i mean steve still does i think in carini um they they go and teach in athens there's a blues festival there's a lenny festival so i was like okay great so i texted i messaged shanzi on facebook uh -huh. and it's hi my name is Ioana. blah 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 and she's like funny thing i'm stuck in greece because she had some sort of um like a medical emergency and she was totally fine but she's like i'm stuck there but you should check out the lindy loft dax and sarah and mm -hmm. get that's how how i ended up with um at the loft that's how your yeah. journey began so funny yeah that's how and it began the dance in a day workshop they used to do though so we do a few hours in the morning lunch break and a few hours after you got a decent sense of what the the style is like and whether or not you liked it. I was hooked from the yeah. beginning. Yeah. I loved it. Got classes, went social dancing. Then then they left to teach. They they were teaching the entire summer and I didn't want to forget what I had learned. Mm -hmm. And at the time, not many people from my class were going out. So I was like, where can I go social dance? And I found Lindy Groove. Mm -hmm. And that was how I started with Linda Groove. And then I just went every Thursday. Again, some of my oldest friends I met there. Um, yeah. Yeah. And so like you mentioned that you were hooked. I know that some people who are listening to this are potentially people that may be interested in swing dancing or mm -hmm. they're like just starting out. What were the elements of that class and learning about swing dancing that really like hooked you? Ooh. Excellent question. <laughs> <laughs> Let me remember. Um, you know, it's funny because a lot of things 
I don't know if it was my initial feeling or what I've grown to to value even more as I can't really separate it but um the music for sure I mm. loved um I liked the playfulness which is one thing that I value it's like at the top um of my list mm -hmm. the dance where you it's a partner dance but there's so much room to play and create together or also individually within the conversation you're having yeah that I've never experienced that before and I did when I was in high school for a few years I did a you know ballroom and Latin mm -hmm. dance mm -hmm. also really enjoyed it different completely different uh um, yeah. feel and scene so I would say yeah that ease um of approaching people the the and the playfulness and the music I think that was probably what it was I love how you brought up playfulness because I just did a podcast with Sarah Stembridge which is going to come later on this month but she also mentioned how playfulness was a core dance value oh yeah which Good. I think that it's I guess that's one of the reasons why I love dancing with both of you so much is because it, there's so much room to play and <laughs> with other dances maybe it's because I don't know the other dance that well but it's harder for me to do that with other dances with Lindy Hop it's so easy you know yeah and um, speaking of which we're talking about social dancing but you mentioned Lindy Groove and how you were able to when you started going there that's where you mm -hmm. met some of your oldest friends and I imagine that having that sense of community as someone who just moved from overseas was really helpful yeah definitely yeah um I didn't start dancing until so I had already lived here for five almost five years when I started dancing mm -hmm. but what that community brought to me was definitely a sense of belonging to to a to a group of people that really enjoyed doing what I enjoyed doing um mm -hmm. and it's also it's like a new world yeah it's it's a new world you get to explore and you get to explore together um because we're all different levels but it didn't matter um yeah so it did make me feel like it was nice to know that I would go there you know go out listen to the music I loved dance and see people that I knew and I you know I cared about um yeah yeah and I mean I, I will say that since moving here Lindy Groove has been like a cornerstone yeah for, for me it, too they yeah. do a good job of I mean it's it's very welcoming Lindy Groove mm. is it's easy it's it's warm there's no they they do a Lance and and Vicky they do a great job of <clears throat> keeping it welcoming yes that's the easiest way I don't know how else to describe it but just yeah that that welcoming feeling to people that have been going there for so long but to people who just show up for one class one dance um yeah it's so important I I highly I highly agree so for anyone listening who may not be from SoCal or listening from out of town Lindy Groove happens every Thursday in Pasadena and uh, you can find more information at lindygroove.com. This just became a sponsorship for Lindy Group. <laughs> but, yeah, I'm the first one talking about this either. <laughs> I'm sure I mean, it's been brought up before. I mean, yeah, it's 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 a very big community oriented space, and I feel like mm -hmm. it's really great because it enabled us to connect in different ways. For example. I know I don't think I would have met Bianca if it weren't for Lindy Groove. And then Bianca and I ended up coming and watching one of your shows, which was a blast, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> that was. Yeah, that was a ton of fun. Um, for those, well, I'll let you describe what that was because I don't know if I'll do it justice, like the one that Bianca and I visited. <laughs> it's briefly, it was a, a one act play festival. So essentially, a one act play is a short play, mm -hmm. like about 10 minutes um people wrote them submitted them to this festival and if you got in you got to perform the play on stage so uh, that's what we did we got into those final did you come in finals 
I don't yes, remember. I did. Yeah. It, um, it was fun. It was like a, 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 such a variety of stories and characters and it was fun. Those are always cool to do. Yeah, it was, it was really, really neat. And I, I want to go, I want to go to more, um, because that's such a, I was telling you on earlier that the acting world, it's so close, but it's so like, I don't, I have no idea of what that's like. And I think we'll talk a little bit about that. Actually, let's go into that now, if you don't mind. So since we're talking about acting, um, is it fair for me? It, I don't even know if this is the right term, but would I be able to to um, reference you as like, oh, you are an actress? Is that, is, or what's the right terminology? Yeah, people use both. Um, okay. I like, you can use whichever term. They're both official. Um, I tend to uh, use actor more than actress. Uh-huh. It really it just fits better for me. It's like, you know, uh, I don't know, a painter, an engineer. A, uh, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like that's the title. That's the, the, the category of this art, acting. So I usually say I'm an actor, but I'm not, I wouldn't ever be offended if you said actress. There's gotcha. no... So Yo Joanna is an actor and she's an amazing actor, might I add. Oh, you're my you... <laughs> <laughs> <That counts. laughs> um, but I, I, I will say this though. I don't think I told you this, but I've actually you remember when you did so if you don't know, Joanna did a commercial for the one and only Dwayne the Rock Johnson. And I was a really big fan of Dwayne The Rock Johnson. I think this came out in like 2016, 2017. Yeah. yeah. And I think I briefly mentioned to you that um, I had seen you there. And I was like, oh, wow, she's so cool. She's going through the jungle, like all this <laughs> stuff happening. And I never thought in my life that I would someday be able to call that person my friend and dance with you on a semi-regular basis. Because that, so I'm not... I'm not 100% biased because I did see that performance and I was like, wow, you know? Ooh, you know what? I do remember now. You did tell me this story. Uh, yeah. Oh, that is so cool. That's. Yeah. <laughs> but that's not the only thing you've done. So I guess the question is, what are some things that you've done in the past and what are you working on right now? I know the answer, but I'm I'm asking you anyways. For our listeners. <laughs> for our listeners. There you go. For our listeners. Um, you know, but it's true though. I realized that um, many of my friends um, now, like through dancing or or that I've met along the way dancing, they actually have never seen um, any of my work acting huh? or anything like that. Because a lot of the work that we do early on, it's um, things that go to festivals or mm. Short, uh, short films that are on Amazon Prime, but it's not like we'll hang out and be like, oh, by the way, I did this short film two years ago. Here's the link. Go check it out. You know, mm -hmm. but you, I'm also not great at that. Um, but some fun th I've done. I've been lucky. Um, actually, I don't know. It was just, I mean, sure. I've been lucky to have been involved in some uh, pretty fun projects. One of them being that video that we did for The Rock. That was that was just that was surreal. Mm. Um, also, because they wouldn't announce what it was when I got cast in it. They wouldn't tell me until they gave me the role. Mm -hmm. Um, and then I got sick, and I thought I was going to, and it was going to be in the. We shot at the at uh, what's it called? National Angeles Forest. Uh -huh. It was super cold at night. I had a fever like the week, be the a few days before we we're going to shoot. And I was really worried. I'm like, I really don't want to, I mean, I of course want to do this, but I also don't want to end up in the hospital. Yeah. So I talked to the producer one day and I don't know, maybe it's because I wasn't as experienced or because I was very, very sick, but I asked him straight up. I said, listen, I'm, you know, sick right now I have a fever I don't know if he's like you know what I think I can work around it and I don't know what they I mean obviously they could if they couldn't they wouldn't have done it but they moved the production <laughs> by a week so we could shoot in the forest I was like thank goodness the acting gods 
and the rock. Nice. <laughs> so that was one. Um, I got to do a, a voiceover on a short film directed by Spielberg, um, narrated by Meryl Streep. That was surreal, like hearing my voice next to hers. And it was fantastic. Um, it's called Auschwitz. It's actually is it was when did we shoot that i think 2017 anyway um i've done some fun commercials i have done my own short film which was my thesis film and uh we did good in festivals and then we got tv distribution that was fun to see it Ooh. it's called a little part of you <laughs> mm. um what else and then well, most recently, last this past year, um, I did two films. The latest one, which you wanted to mention, is which you already mentioned actually, the Hallmark movie. Yes, the wedding veil <laughs> journey, the wedding veil journey, the wedding veil journey, which is the last movie in a series of six mm -hmm. very successful series. Um, we filmed it in Greece on the island of Rhodes. It was beautiful. It was a fantastic experience. Everyone was great to work with, really wonderful. We were all staying at the same hotel. So it was nice to, you know, hang out, actually get to know people. Mm -hmm. I loved the role. I got to use my Greek accent to <laughs> Penelope. Um, and it was fantastic. And I don't get to do comedy a lot. I used to to do more. I didn't used to do just more of the opportunities I've gotten are doing drama, which yeah. I enjoy doing doing it all, but it was fun to have this lighthearted story and character come to life. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, you got to do just a tiny bit of dancing. Yeah. Did I? Towards the end. It was more like swaying, but it was dancing kind of. You're very good at this. Yes, it was. In fact, Alex, who I'm in the scene with, I'm dancing with, he played the brother. Anyway, it doesn't matter. Um, great, great guy. Uh, so we were dancing in the scene. He's like, wow, you have a dancer's frame. I was like, what? <laughs> <laughs> Great. My dancing experience carries through. <laughs> it, it it does. And I, I did, as you can see, I did my research because you also have this um, page. I think it was just your page and you had listed like advanced swing dancing as like one of your skills. Mm -hmm. And I was like, yeah. And I was like, that's a bit of an understatement because you're, you're more than <laughs> I feel like it's advanced is good. <laughs> and, and, and advanced. I think advanced is a good one because I mean, I'm, I'm just waiting for the day when you get, because have you been able to showcase like Lindy Hop in a movie yet? Uh, no, we did a promo for a film festival where we got a dance. Uh, mm -hmm. Not yet. I would love to. It would be really fun. That would be amazing. If I ever um if I ever decide to make this movie that I want to make someday, you're the you first person. You want to make mind. a movie? Oh. Leave something to the rest of us. <laughs> you do it all. You do it so well. You people love you. They're all gonna go. Oh, I'm just kidding. No, but, but I, they will all come because you'll be the star. Can you just, I mean, just just humor me, picture this, talking about how someone found swing dancing and mm -hmm. it would be like a romantic comedy, right? Mm -hmm. You would be the, the girl that the guy sees across the room. <laughs> it's like, oh, her, you know? Actually, that, that actually reminds me, did I tell you that I was in a movie? No. I was, I have like, what five is... seconds it was called control out dance i know this why does that sound familiar dax hawk and uh, sarah breck were the main characters oh wait it's their movie it's their movie yeah you're in it i was in the jam circle right before dax goes and does his solo thing in front of sarah what oh my gosh i have to rewatch it <laughs> <laughs> it was it was not that memorable it was it was a a huge one. I completely forgot about it, but that's um, awesome. Well, thanks. But all I'm saying you would you would be the star if I ever decide to make this movie. But I got other things I gotta do first. I know. I know. <laughs> <laughs> one of those 
being um, like traveling and competing? Because that is also something that you do. I know that we flip flopped a little bit, but we'll go back to the the final thing at the end here. We we had mentioned how you traveled to Greece, right, for that movie, The Wedding Veil. And we'll we'll talk about Greece here in a little bit as well because it has to do with your series. Um, but I wanted to talk about the traveling piece and traveling and competing because um, I was I remember watching ILHC when you got paired up with a buddy of mine, Mike McDermott. Mike, if you're listening, shout out to you. <laughs> yeah, what a fun dance we had it was so evident in the way you two were like so playful and like, Oh, it was so good. Oh, thanks. Um, for those who haven't, for those who, who don't know, so Joanna competes and you compete pretty regularly, right? Yeah, I would say so. Yeah. And so like, uh, you won ILHC open last year. What was it? Oh my goodness. You know what? Every event has different names for the categories, and I always confuse. I know, me too. Well, yeah, it, it, does it go open, advanced? It was open. It was. Yeah, open. I believe it was. Uh, it was open. Yeah, I believe. I believe it was indeed open. Yeah, it was the uh, open one. Okay, good. <laughs> I just looked it up, and it's. I literally looked up ILHC Joanna Melly, and your YouTube channel pops up. Which, by the way, she has. Joanna has a YouTube channel, oh. so y'all should check that out. <laughs> For but my yeah. chances. First place, Joanna and Michael open draw finals. Ah, oh, my friends are so talented. <laughs> so are you. Ah, uh, well, thank you, friend. Maybe someday. Wait, since you've done open, you have to go to advance now for LAC, huh? Yeah, I did advance at Camp Hollywood that year too, because this was last May. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I had such fun dances in advanced mix and match at um, Camp Hollywood. It was, uh, it was just the best. And that, that is. I mean, that competition is just stacked. Yeah. <laughs> Like it, yeah. Camp Hollywood only has those two levels. So you live your best life while you're in open, actually mm -hmm. working to, and you, then, you know, once you translate, uh, tr um, wait, not tr what's the word I'm looking for? Transition. Transition. Thank you. Mm -hmm. um, at this point, I would like to remind our listeners that English is not my first language. <laughs> yeah, that's true. It is very true. I was just about to say that. How many times things just don't translate in my head i'm like wait what what am i trying mm. to say anyway so once you transition then there is a little bit of a holding period mm. <laughs> you're with like the all-stars of the world yeah um you have great dances and prelims mm -hmm. i think some people are calling it purgatory dance purgatory <laughs> okay yeah. Because it's a, another level, but I was curious about like how you view competition. Because I see, I know a lot of people view competition differently. So how do you approach it? Like, um, how do you prepare for it? Just what are your thoughts on it? Competing in Lindy, um, this is a good question. Overall. I'll start there. I find that competitions are great motivation for me to work on things I want to get better at. Mm -hmm. I need that motivation. I need that goal. Um, and it, it, it excites me to, you know, to keep moving. Mm -hmm. Um, that's one. Then I remember that <laughs> my very first dance event was camp Hollywood and it wow. was, September 2016. Um, at that point, I was a baby dancer. I went with a couple of friends. Um, and Katie Frame is one of them. Mm -hmm. And I remember what, I wasn't competing or anything. Like, I didn't know what was what. Yeah. But I remember being, watching those competitions. And my mo I was like mind blown by everyone. But just like watching the dancing and the energy in the room of people watching and like um, cheering and encouraging and, and being so excited. 
perhaps because that was my very first experience, I got really sucked into, I was like, I want to do this. Yeah. Yeah. Up there. Um, and I'm always very inspired by, by watching people in competitions. Mm-hmm. Prelims or finals. I feel like I get inspired. Um, it, it's, I just enjoy watching it. And so I would like to offer that, to be that for someone else. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I enjoyed that. So um, that's an important part. And then, yeah, it's just, I mean, it's exciting. It, it's thrilling that once you start making finals and, and you do have that crowd cheering for you and just waiting to see what you're going to do next um, or, you know, dancing. And then also right after a competition, I think that is my favorite thing that that happened the past two events for sure. Um, I mean, I remember it vividly where we got off the floor and I had like all my friends would come up to us and they're like, oh my gosh, that was great. We couldn't get our eyes off you. Mm-hmm. Um, the partnership. And it just means the world. It's what I like to do. I, I hope that I, I hope that I do that for, for people. I try to, um, I think it matters because it's not, you know, I can't speak for other dance styles or events or anything, but Lindy and perhaps all of swing dance, but especially Lindy, which is near and dear to my heart. Mm. It's so much about having a conversation and communication that it's not a showcase per se. It's not like watch what I can do. Look at this incredible aerial I can throw. Look how to me, I don't know, maybe yeah. it's because I don't look at it from that point of view, but it's, it's, it means a lot when people come up to you and they're like, I loved watching you dance. They're not like, oh my gosh, that line of your, you know, your leg or the splits that you did, which to me wouldn't mean anything. But yeah. when say that I loved watching you dance it means the world and that's what I try to be I guess someone that will enjoy watching (laughs) when I dance that's very refreshing (laughs) to hear (laughs) yeah not that like people don't say that but um I I don't know if it's just my friends and like that's the type of energy that uh, we attract in the universe but uh-huh. like Sarah said the same thing is like she loves playfulness she loves competition because it well she didn't say she loves competition but she said competition is nice because then it gives you something to work towards which is I very much identify with that completely you know 100% and since we are talking about goals I wanted to ask you like do you approach your film career or your acting career the same way like you have that goal and you you like I don't know what what would be like the same competition versus like a movie or something but do you approach it do you have the same method for that um the short answer is no because you can't really set that there's no clear goals like that that you can set and that you Mm. know no I can't say that oh I will be filming this movie in 10 months from now so let me work I mean, perhaps, yeah, when I book a role, then I have yeah. that goal or something um, to work on it. But it's harder because with dancing, I know that if I want to compete at, let's say, Camp Hollywood next year, I know it's going to be there. Mm-hmm. Well, unless the pandemic happens, knock on wood. Yeah. I mean, it will be there. It will be waiting for us to register and compete and I can work towards it. Um, it's different with acting. I have to set my goals, personal goals. Um, I guess in a way I work similarly. I like, I like to be, I like schedules and I, I try to stay organized. I need to be Mm -hmm. active in what I do. So when I'm not filming, I have to be doing something to, you know, stay active. Um, I will be in class. I'll be working on scripts. I'll, I'll be doing things. I don't know. Is that, yeah, I guess. I practice. So in a sense, I practice for dancing and I practice for acting. So maybe yes is the answer. (laughs) Okay. I mean, I can see, I can see that parallel because I guess, yeah, it makes sense when you say that as far as acting goes, you need to book a role first, 
right? Yeah. This may be like a super not into, I don't fully understand the world, but I'm curious, what is, what does that booking or auditioning process look like for an actor? Oh, um, so essentially we have our material on certain professional platforms, like acting pro platforms. So I'll have my, my profile will have my credits, my resume, my training, demo reels and so on and so forth yeah um, my reps my representatives like my agents and my manager they use that profile to submit me to castings where there's a role that that i'm a good fit for mm -hmm. casting will really like let's say a tv show is casting for their next season they'll release the roles that they're looking to fill um to representatives they'll go in they'll see oh they're looking for a 30 to 35 you know white girl with a mole on her right cheek <laughs> fit for this let me pitch her so they'll submit me for that if casting wants to see me then they'll invite me to an audition i'll mm -hmm. submit tape because these days it's mostly um taped instead of going live mm -hmm. or film and tv at least for commercials we go in um and yeah, and if they like it, then there's a second round called callbacks. Um, and then you could be put on a veil, which is, you know, they want you to keep that time, the filming time available because they're saying, hey, it's between you and like, I don't know, two or three other people. Uh -huh. And then they for the role. That's basically the progression of it. And it's not like guaranteed, like, oh, we'll get back to you in three days. It's like a- oh, no. Mm -mm. no 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 most of the time you don't hear back I'll only hear back if they want me for the role otherwise I'll send an audition I might get called in for a call back and then I won't hear back because they didn't cast me in it mm. so that's... You... oh sorry go ahead Jimmy me interrupt you no, no, just, that's the process I feel like I don't know if gotcha <laughs> so how do you how what do you do to um what do you do to care for yourself when an audition um when audition like doesn't call back like how how do you work through that i don't really i hmm. mean I don't, I don't really have to it's part of it it's it it's part of the job mm -hmm. you know um I mean, if it's something, if it's like a role I really like, something that is so well written that I really enjoyed shooting, which has happened, and it just happened like a month ago for this film, and I haven't heard back. Um, I'm like, uh, you know, it's a shame. I would have loved to film that, but but that's about it. I feel like by now, I don't, I don't take it personally. I've, I've, it, it is the business. My job is essentially to audition. Yeah, I got something. you. So I do my best to to do good work, um, bring what I can give to any role, and then if it's a good fit for the story, fantastic. I think this if, is then. Oh, go ahead. Sorry. No, it's a, if not, then it's then it's not. Then they found someone who is a good fit. <laughs> gotcha. I think that this is then a perfect segue into your project because you don't have to audition for your own project. That's right. That is the perfect. Look at you, Andre. <laughs> <laughs> it's as if you've done this before. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> um, um, yeah, that is another thing in the process of staying active and, and, and being creative is create your own content, which they always tell us there's things that we hear a lot as actors, but um, I created this series. Um, I actually created it during like the heavy quarantine. So like late 2020, early 2021. Mm -hmm. um, I didn't know what I was going to do with it. I just, I always have ideas that I write down. Um, so I was developing a different kind of series. I was writing about it. And then that was this idea was going to be an episode in the other series. Mm. The more I thought of that episode, the more ideas I had to like add to it. And then I realized, oh, I'll just make that into a mini series so essentially it's a series about a young woman who is forced to leave LA during quarantine because of everything that's going on and 
returning home to Greece to quarantine with her parents. Mm -hmm. um, I have always wanted to use elements of my cultural background and my work. Yeah. Um, so this was the perfect opportunity. And I think that's why I felt so inspired to do it. It was, it's, it's lighthearted, it's comedic, but very like slice of life. Mm. Um, it's called Home 19. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a word play on COVID-19. <laughs> <laughs> if that isn't clear. Um, yeah, and it's a mini series on YouTube. I release an episode every Thursday at 11 a.m. Pacific time. Mm -hmm. um, and it's very exciting, uh, although a little stressful because <laughs> I didn't realize how personal a lot of that stuff was until I got so close to until I released it, essentially. So, but it's wonderful to, you know, I have my friends, um, you, for example, who watch it and text me and they say I loved it. And <laughs> if you do love it, it's totally fine. But I appreciate, you know, the interest and the support and, and just, you know the love of, of course of yeah. course and not i'm not gonna ruin it but you all should watch it i'm i i texted you and i was like i'm invested i need to know what happens next <laughs> it's literally a series where you're going through this story and you can empathize because we were all there we all had that that home 19 moment and the working out to videos or the dancing to videos i connected with that that's not that's not uh spoiling anything right no 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 it's fine <laughs> yeah. but, but i'm so glad you said that i'm really happy because i was that's what i was hoping mainly for the it's you know it's a small project um and i'm just really i'm excited about how it's turned out and i mostly want people to enjoy it maybe laugh empathize um and Maybe, yeah, see a little bit of themselves and their parents or some sort of some family figure um, mm. in that. <laughs> I I uh, I definitely related. Um, mm. There was one there's a well, you all just have to watch it. I can't like keep talking about it because you all have to watch it. But there's a scene there where um, Joanna's character experiences like no people around. And I had that same moment um, when I was in the middle of quarantine and I empathized that because I was like, oh man, no one's here. I would love to go home. I would love to go see my parents right now. And so when I saw that you went home and, or that your character went home and all that, I was like, oh man, that's beautiful. Like anything that's family related, like gets me teary eyed immediately. <laughs> I'm so glad. Um, it, it was funny. Oh, sorry. No, go ahead. Um, I was just going to say that, um, wait, what was I going to say? Now I forgot. I oh was... no, I threw you off. <laughs> <laughs> um, about home 19, you know what? I forgot. Maybe it'll come. It'll come. Oh, well, another thing is that I have a couple of friends who were like, oh my gosh, is this what it was really like? And I have to remind, it's, it's the type of, you know, series that, it is very personal. So some people think that it's like, I'm like, it's not a vlog. It's yeah. not a journal. <laughs> this is why the character is called a certain, you know, they have a name and yeah, but absolutely it's, it's inspired by, you know, my experience and, and being with my parents back home as an adult. Mm -hmm. And I think, you know, some Greek quirkiness that, that I love. <laughs> yeah. And I, I like a, a part I like about the series is it's it's very it's this this may seem uh, I don't know how this was seen but like the way it's edited is very palpable like oh, great <laughs> thank you that that that's awesome that's yeah. awesome here. <laughs> I like I, I thought it was really cool how you used the angles to tell a story um oh if that makes any sense and like the way you edit it and like that soundtrack is in my head the dana 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 <laughs> oh man that plays in my head all the time now <laughs> but um if people wanted to watch it or find information about home 19 um where where should they go looking 
Um, so it's on my YouTube channel. Um, I go by Ioana Melly as an actor. So um, it's on there. Uh, if you search on any search engine, Ioana Melly Home 19, it will pop up. But it is on YouTube. Home 19, the series, is on Instagram. Um, yeah. It's yeah. On you can more or less, but you can find it on my website, ioanamelli.com. I have it posted there. So, yeah. That's actually, uh, yeah, because when I when I was looking for it, I was able to find your YouTube, which is also pretty darn cool. Um, but I, there's nothing else on it. I mean, the series is on there, but then it's all my demo reels. <laughs> basically. Well, that too. New to the YouTube world, Andre. <laughs> okay, yeah, but I will say, watching your demo reels is so cool because you, you like transform <laughs> I guess that's your job like you have to like transform for that audition right yeah it's true yeah you wouldn't have seen it otherwise so thank you I appreciate that that's really sweet also your website is dope you like yeah your <laughs> eyes just like look into our souls thanks friend okay well that I think if you need all the information about Home 19, um, I like to use the Instagram page to like uh, see what stories come out and whatnot. Um, do you premiere all of your YouTube videos? I do. Okay. Because I jumped in on the premiere on one of them and I was able to chat with Joanna a little bit. That was so fun. I hope more people can make it to the... I know it's like, you know, it's they're also really short episodes, so... Hmm. Can jump in for the five minutes we'll be happy to see you yeah and i i typically use that for my like lunch break so i like to just jump in at 11 and i go say hey and whatnot um so you all should go check that out now um is before we start doing the wrap-up questions you want is there anything else that you want i think we touched on um mostly everything but is there anything else you wanted to discuss on the podcast um I don't know I've never done this before <laughs> <laughs> don't worry we we talked about dancing which is really important to me um we talked about acting we talked about where I come from I don't know shall we talk about you <laughs> no 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 I'm Paul Ray did a podcast with me, so you all can go watch Paul's cat Paul's podcast. Oh, I'll have to. I have to. <laughs> um, although I have had the idea of like having someone else interview me, because some people message me, they're like, hey, Demetrio said the same thing. He's like, yo, I want to ask you questions. I'm like, you're the guest on my podcast. Like, <laughs> I'll do a podcast. I think I'll do a podcast there where someone interviews me. That could like, be fun. Yeah, like a, an inverted podcast where a bunch of us are guests are on and we interview you on your podcast oh snap <laughs> oh man get all the guests back together to interview me damn that would be whew. all right that sounds like fun one question. one question go okay sounds good um here's the other thing so the, i asked three questions to all of my guests so uh -huh. the first question is uh what swing dance events are you planning to go to and actually i'll even add what like acting events or like uh, production events are you planning to go to in the future? Ooh. Um, well, for acting, I can't, I don't really. Oh, you can't I'm talk about it. No, 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 no. I'm not. Oh. <laughs> I don't have anything. I have a commercial coming out. Um, I don't have anything lined up to film right now. So I can't really speak to that, but I am planning on completing my series and all the marketing that comes with it, which is so much work uh -huh. um, but if there's anything new I'll post about it Thanks okay. for it. um for dancing next I'm going to ILHC in New York on Memorial Day weekend mm -hmm. um I will definitely be at Camp Hollywood mm -hmm. Labor Day weekend and those are the the two main ones that I've planned for for the year I'm kind of I'm very tempted to do more. I'm always tempted, but um, I have to prioritize. <laughs> I feel you so much on that. Yeah, I also need to prioritize. I almost went to Lindy Fest and- I know. Mm -hmm. 
I know. And Lindy Fest was so much fun. You'll love it. Just plan on it next year. I really enjoy that event. Yeah, I'm, I am definitely making a plan for next year for that. Okay. You know what? Can I just add something? Yeah. Okay. Because you asked about um, what else to touch upon. And since we're still, we talked about dancing. Um, because we talked about competing, I wanted to add that another thing that I really like about competing at events is, and you don't need the competition per se, but for me, it gives me the chance to dance with other people and practice with other people, mm. which I really enjoy. I think it's, it's again, it's like motivation. It's, it's, you know, um, a little extra where I'll call up someone that I've danced with at a different event or I met and we're friends now. We're like, Hey, this is what happened this year. I've worked with two people from out of town um, because we enjoy dancing together. And we're like, Hey, do you want to train? And um, it's great. You develop different skills. Mm -hmm. I, you really grow as a dancer, I feel like. And I just love that. <laughs> I I think that's a really beautiful point as well. I actually met Hussein through you. Oh, nice. I didn't know that. Yeah. When uh, you brought him to like that practice. Yeah. 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 When Which, he was he was in town. Was it for minor swing or was it? Um, was it? I me too, but I, I, I forget when it was too, but. Yeah, yeah, but the group practice we all went to. Yeah, which, by the way, that was my first one. I was nervous as all hell. <gasps> oh, no. Were you really? Oh, yeah. I mean, I was in the room with what I think was, like, the best dancers in SoCal, essentially. You know? And I was like... Uh... Uh... <laughs> <laughs> I will say, um, I think practicing is something that I've had some good good friends ask me about it who are starting to to compete um mm -hmm. also newer dancers and I think that's something that we should try to talk more about mm -hmm. maybe in our community or the lessons and everything the idea of people don't know how to start when they don't have a dance partner and they don't know how to start practicing I was lucky because I met Paul mm -hmm. and we clicked in fact I didn't meet Paul in, in California did you, did you know this we met we met at, um, uh, what's it called? I mean, I danced with him in a mix and match at Inspiration Weekend. I was like, oh my gosh, this is, what a great dancer. Yeah. And we were together in Arizona at uh, Swing to Pen Dance. Yeah. In Phoenix. Um, and that's essentially when we got to spend time together and started becoming friends. And then we're like, okay, let's practice. But it doesn't just happen. And a lot of people don't know how to get started. So mm -hmm. I would put that out there if there's newer people listening that I think I think all it takes is if you go out social dancing and you dance with someone that you 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 enjoy dancing with just ask them after the song say hey would you like to come early next week you know book the studio come early and just dance you know practice a little bit mm -hmm. um, bring in a video or you know an online class that you found of someone and just do that uh, I think that's really important because there shouldn't be any stress around practicing. It's just practice. Oh, yes. Oh, my gosh. That that is such a good point that I really want to stress is, yes, that is um, very, very helpful. I think if you're listening to this and you're thinking about competing, um, Daphne, I'm talking specifically to you again. This is the second time I'm calling her out in my podcast, but She's wanting to compete now. And I, I remember one thing that Blake told me. He told me that if you want to pr prepare for competitions and if you want to train, it's always, it's better in his mind to practice with someone who's willing to practice than practice with someone who'll be the perfect fit, right? Because if you practice with someone who's just willing to practice, like that gets reps in. That's a great point. That's, a, yeah, that's yeah. true. What a wise, wise man. Um, Indeed. <laughs> and I feel, I just feel so lucky that I found someone who's damn near perfect for me to practice with, you know? Oh, who, Amy? Yeah. Oh, of course, Emily. Oh, you yeah, guys she, are so 
so, so fun to watch. I mean, you're also both such wonderful human beings that it's just like, I'll watch whatever you do. I don't care. I don't know. <laughs> I'll just watch you stand there, basically. <laughs> I got you on that. Yeah, there. <laughs> you know, this is this is what Amy would do. She'd be like this, bro, you too, you too, bro. That is what you do. Um, that is so kind of you. You want to see this is why I like our our friends here in SoCal. And we're we're all just it's just good people in general, you know? Yeah. Well. I think that we'll go towards wrapping it up then. Um, I have two more questions left. Not too much. Oh, no, no, no. This is the point of the podcast. This is perfect. Like, we want that. Um, where can people find more information about you on socials and whatnot? Um, Ioana Melli. I-O-A-N-N-A-M-E-L-I. Okay. Uh, yeah. Instagram, uh, I mostly post about my work. Um, so you'll see a lot of acting, some dancing. And my website, ioannamella.com. All right. <laughs> Those are the places where you can find Ioana. And the last question I like to ask all of my guests, Ooh. I think we kind of talked about a little bit. What is the message you want to leave for any swing dancers that are listening? <gasps> that is a heavy question, Audrey. I know it is. <laughs> uh, here is what, okay. I don't know if it's a message, but it's something that, I tried to remind myself, um, this is a wonderful social dance and community. And I think the most important thing is to remember that it is meant to be fun. Mm. Um, it's not, especially because we touched on competitions and events and all that, um, find your, your meaning of the com of competitions, let's say your goal with them, but don't let that dictate your dance journey, uh, who you want to partner with. Um, just remember that it's, it's a personal expression mm. of your own self in this dance form that we're so lucky to have around and dance. So yeah, remember that it is all meant to be enjoyable and fun and not not stressful <laughs> i love it i love that and very much agreed with that i don't i think that's a really great way to end this phenomenal podcast episode <laughs> um, thank you so much for asking such great questions andre it's so nice to have these conversations of course Joanna. of course and um thank you for taking the time to be here everyone else thank you so much for listening please don't forget to subscribe to us on instagram or on youtube as well as subscribe to Joanna. follow myself uh at uh socal summer swing out uh on instagram as well as follow Joanna. All the links will be in the descriptions, but appreciate you all listening. Ioana, thank you for being here. Everyone else, we'll talk to you later. Bye.